If the election were held today, Biden would lose to Trump. Some U.S. Muslims are pledging to ditch Biden in 2024 over his stance on Israel-Gaza. We've talked about this a little, but this is pretty important and I don't think enough people are paying attention to it. Muslim American leaders in several pivotal states pledged on Saturday to rally their communities against President Joe Biden's bid for re-election due to his steadfast backing of Israel's war in Gaza, war in Gaza, war on Gaza. The abandoned Biden campaign began when Minnesota Muslim Americans demanded that Biden call for a ceasefire by October 31st and has spread to Michigan, Arizona, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Florida. This hashtag abandoned Biden 2024 conference is set against the backdrop of the upcoming 2024 presidential election and the decision to withdraw support for President Biden due to his unwillingness to call for a ceasefire and protect innocents in Palestine and Israel, the group told U.S. news outlet Axios in a statement. This is what we call effective organizing folks. Muslim Americans in these groups are not just taking their ball and going home and saying like we're not voting for Biden because nothing. No, they're like organizing and they are coming up with concrete points that Biden would have to do in order to earn their vote back. This is how you do it. They are saying for one that arms need to be conditioned to Israel and that U.S. funding for the genocide must stop. These are concrete actionable steps that the Biden administration could take right now. And the fact that they're choosing not to shows you that A, they don't give a fuck about Muslim Americans. They don't give a fuck about Arab Americans. It's like they would rather protect Netanyahu's political career and the fascist right-wing government of Israel than they would to even win re-election. And there's a lot of, okay, well, what about Trump? And listen, I totally understand that. What about Trump? Like, Trump is also a Zionist. And Trump is a lunatic. And one of the first things that Trump did when he came into office was cut funding for UNRWA. He did everything that Netanyahu wanted. He moved the embassy to Jerusalem. He allowed them to steal more land. He empowered settlers. And Trump is promising to deport Muslim Americans and Arab Americans if he wins re-election. But here's the thing, guys. Muslim Americans are aware of this. They're not unaware of the threat. Like, no one in the Muslim American community or the Arab community is denying that Trump is going to be worse or that he's dangerous. But just because Trump will in fact be worse and is in fact very dangerous to American democracy and Muslims and Arabs all over the country does not mean that ergo the Biden administration can just keep enabling a genocide and no one should care about it and no one should try to fight back against it and no one should try to pressure him because Trump it will be worse. Like, no, not Trump. Trump, this article goes on to say, Muslim Americans said that they do not expect former President Trump to treat their community any better if reelected, but saw denying Biden's vote as their only means to shape U.S. policy. We are not supporting Trump, he said, adding that the Muslim community would decide how to interview other candidates. It remains to be seen whether Muslim voters would turn against Biden in mass, but small shifts in support could make a difference in states that Biden won by narrow margins in 2020. And guys, that right there is everything. Biden only won because about 45,000 votes swung across five swing states. Our electoral system in this country is a joke. We should elect presidents via popular vote, but we don't. We elect them from a handful of swing states based on the Electoral College, which was implemented because they didn't want black people to be able to have representation. It's just a a vestige of racism, but we continue with it. So because of that, doesn't matter that Biden won the popular vote by 7 million. Doesn't matter that Clinton won the popular vote. Doesn't matter that Republicans always lose the popular vote. If just a handful of people vote against Biden in places like Michigan that has a large Arab American population, he's done. He's done. It's over. He's going to lose. And a reminder that over 70% of Arabs voted for Biden in the last election. So people need to understand the right wing, is, their base is very homogenous, okay? It's like Republicans are mostly white, mostly evangelical Christian, and old people, boomers who are on death's door, but they remain forever seemingly continuing to vote in presidential elections. Democrats do not have that kind of electorate. The Democrats are a coalition of a bunch of different small coalitions of people who oftentimes don't have anything in common with each other. You have the coalitions of young people, young people broadly across racial lines support Democrats. You have Arab Americans, you have black Americans, you have, or you used to have Latino Americans. Latinos are leaving the Democratic Party. Like every single election cycle, Democrats lose more and more Latino support. Then you have college educated voters, specifically college educated white women. The support among college educated white women has continued to grow 
basically since Trump got in office. But that's not enough because a lot of people aren't college educated. So all them uncollege educated white women are still voting for Republicans. Like, don't even, I'm, that, that's a fucking separate video. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with you people. The point is this. Democrats need to connect all of these coalitions together in order to win elections. They cannot win elections at the national level without cobbling all the coalitions, including the LGBTQ plus community together. And what you see happening now is that these coalitions are starting to break down. So you don't need a massive swath of people across the entire country to stop supporting Democrats. All you need is small fragments of different coalitions across the swing state to do so, and he's done. And that's already happening. Because if you look at polling, and this is consistent polling we've been seeing for months now, Biden is not only losing massive support amongst Arab Americans, he has lost massive support amongst young people, massive support amongst the black community. And I know that people will still be like, oh, we'll still like 60, 65% of black people still support Biden. Yes, that may be true, but it was like 90. I don't know why you're bragging about that. 90, if you used to have 90% and now you have 60, that's a loss, playboy. People are like, oh, the South Carolina primary just happened and he got 99% of the vote and it was all these black people that came out for him. Bro, some of you need to look at the crosstab. It had 8% turnout in South Carolina, okay? That's how Hillary Clinton lost in 2016 in those swing states because a lot of black people just stayed home. You didn't need a ton of people to come out and vote against Hillary Clinton. You just needed people not to show up. And that's what fucking happened in 2016. Oh, I mean, I'm sorry, it was Russia. So when people try to spin what happened in South Carolina the other day, some kind of win for Biden, no, bro, that is not a win. That is a loss and it's a warning. There are black people that are sitting in South Carolina right now that are saying, you think you're gonna do this? We're just gonna stay home. 8%, that is pathetic. And it's crazy because they never do this with white voters. When Democrats lose white voters, all of a sudden they're showing up in the fucking diner being like, why'd you go to Trump? Why'd you turn into a Republican? What can we do to get you back? But when it comes to Democrats losing significant support amongst black men, which they are, all of a sudden they're all, why are you trying to help Trump? Hmm, why are you trying to help Trump? Why don't you go to one of their fucking diners and ask these black men why they're not supporting Joe Biden? Ask them what the administration can do to earn their vote. And Biden's overall approval rating in the country is in the 30s. No president has ever won re-election in the 30s. And I know that there are gonna be some people that come in and try to be all, actually, you're not paying attention, you're not doing this, you're not doing this. Listen, I understand that there are nuances. There have been things that the Biden administration has done since he's been in office that have been really good, specifically labor. That's probably Probably the best that his administration has been has been on labor and yes it is a fact that his economy has actually been much better than any republicans economy but let's be real about something people don't pay attention to that okay they just don't they just don't it doesn't matter what the economic numbers say it doesn't matter what the unemployment rate is people vote on vibes and they're not feeling it a recent survey revealed a significant decline in biden's backing among arab americans dropping from a substantial majority in 2020 to just 17 percent this shift could have a crucial effect in states like michigan where Biden secured a victory by only 2.8 percentage points. And Arab Americans constitute 5% of the vote according to the Arab American Institute. Among the general public, opinion polls show most Americans back an end to Israel's war in the besieged enclave. It's not just Arab Americans. Most Americans want an end to the genocide, want an end to the siege on Gaza. But Joe Biden seems a lot more interested in doing what BB wants him to do than doing anything for the American people, which I guess kind of tracks because they don't give a fuck about us. We've all talked about and seen that Stanford study that showed that public opinion has little to no influence on public policy. The Biden administration sees these polls. They tried to send a bunch of their lackeys out to Michigan to try to meet with the mayor of Dearborn. They know they're losing, but they don't fucking care. It is more important to them to continue to send billions of dollars, no strings attached to Israel, than it is to win re-election in 2024. Just listen to what this Arab American leader, the mayor of Dearborn, Michigan, Abdullah Mahmoud said when he was asked about the threat that Trump poses and how the Muslim Americans in that community feel. Does it worry you about what a Trump presidency could mean for those lives that you said earlier? You're concerned about each and every one of the innocent people who shouldn't die being saved. Absolutely, I think Trump is a threat to American democracy. So the question should stand, what will President Biden do to prevent the unraveling of our American democracy? Why is being aligned with Benjamin Netanyahu, most right-wing government in Israel's history, worth potentially sacrificing our American democracy? You know, I had a resident that came before a city council meeting who had lost over 80 family members in Gaza. 
And the question on everybody's mind is, while we send our condolences for your loved ones, we want to know how you're going to vote come November. And I think that's extremely dehumanizing to think of Palestinian lives only in the context of polls. There's never been a war in history in which 80% of the country is absolutely decimated, where 100% of the population has been displaced, and where 50% of all the deaths are children. That has never happened. For us, we want action, not lip service. If President Biden wants to take a firm stance, he can begin by restricting military aid to the state of Israel. He can begin by calling a ceasefire, because right now, nearly 200 civilians are killed each and every single day. These are tangible steps that can be taken, because what we understand is only diplomatic efforts can lead to lasting peace. Justice. Exactly. Let's now go to the interview that he did with Joy Reid. And this is an amazing interview. His, he just, his answers are all the right answers. Like, this is how you conduct an interview response. The word that I often hear most frequently from my residents is betrayal. We were promised a president who wanted to bring back good moral conscience to the White House, to bring back decency. And what we found with the ongoing genocide is a president who is aiding, abetting, defending, and funding the genocide out of the Palestinian people. Every single person in the White House should watch this interview. If you actually really care about winning, because I know you guys don't actually give a fuck about Arab American voters, you should be watching this video if you care about winning. But you care about winning, I think. I mean, sometimes I I honestly think that the Democrats like don't care if they lose. Like they really don't care if they're like, yeah, it's fine, it's fine. Controlled opposition, moral winners in defeat, you know, that kind of thing. And anyway. Recognizing a Palestinian state, you've had the Biden administration now sanction settlers who are committing violence against Palestinians in the West Bank. Do those kind of policy changes make a difference in your view to your community? What is left of the quote unquote Palestinian state that they now want to recognize? Mm. It has been demolished from coast to coast right now. If you look at Gaza, over 70% of the infrastructure has been decimated. And so for me, if you want to recognize anything, begin by recognizing the humanity of the Palestinian people. There's should be nobody who believes that any innocent man, woman, or child should be killed. And as it pertains to the sanctions against settlers, from my understanding, it's only applying to four settlers and non-American settlers. And in fact, there are tens of thousands of radical settlers who are American citizens. Take the famous story of Jacob, who came from New York, flew over to Sheikh Jarrah, and stole a Palestinian woman's home. And he said, I quote, if I don't steal it, somebody else will. My question to the president is what accountability will that person have to face? What consequences would Jacob have to face? Yeah, America, Joe Biden should be doing something. It is insane, insane that settlers from America are going into the West Bank. Now, now guys, we're not talking about 30 years ago, 40 years, we're now. Literally just taking Palestinians' homes and then going, well, if we don't take it, somebody else can, you know what I'm saying? And it's amazing to me when like Americans or like Zionists or Republicans will defend this. I'm sorry, you guys are the ones that love to talk about property rights, okay? That's your whole shtick. America, property rights, you got the fucking Gadsden flag, come and take it, don't touch my property, I'm American, we've got arms, that's what the Second Amendment is for. Where are you at? Where are you at? Because you should then support Palestinians defending their homes. You should oppose on principle settlers going in and just stealing their homes. Yeah, funny how quiet you get. Has the White House reached out to you? I mean, you're the mayor of Dearborn, you think it would be a part of conversation they want to have. Have they reached out and said, you know what, come to the White House, let's have a conversation? There has been no invitation to the White House, um, but what I can say it's is there's dialogue happening between individuals about what would a policy conversation uh, uh, outcome look like. And from my understanding, the only condition that I've said is I need individuals who can come to the table, who have decision-making authority, and who are open to changing course. Because if somebody wants to come to just say that they've heard from the American community and use that as a talking point, I'm not I here to be you. used in somebody's political calculation. So when we're planning this segment and we're going to talk about it, we know people are going to talk to you. The, the sort of biggest question I, I do tend to get uh, when I'm speaking with members of the community is, what about the alternative, Donald Trump? I mean, we don't really know what he would think about this whole situation. He's said very little, but we do know his policies have been deeply anti-Muslim and anti-Arab. It, it, it seems likely that he would probably allow even more violence on the West Bank and Gaza if he was president. What do your voters think about him? You know, I, I think to just use your language, you said Donald Trump would just allow more violence, meaning that President Biden allows violence as well. And so for me, I understand that Trump is a threat to American democracy, but the question should be put back into the laps of President Biden. What will you do to earn the trust and respect of your voters? I've run for office several times, and as a candidate, the onus and responsibility is on me to demonstrate why I deserve that trust and respect of the citizens that I'm trying to represent. And so that's what President Biden has to show. How will he change course? All we've seen is a volatile Middle East. All we've seen is endless bombing campaign, and it's time to close that chapter once and for all. And that is the answer. The answer is Muslim Americans are not under any illusion that Trump is going to be extremely dangerous for this country and for them. But he is absolutely right. It is incumbent on the incumbent to do something about that. But therein lies the problem with all Democrats, okay? Every Democrat, their entire party platform, the DNC, all the candidates, their whole thing is vote for me or else. There is no affirmative vision. Like I can give an example of one thing right now that would really help Biden's poll numbers. If Biden were to come out right now and support the bill and push for the bill that stops hedge funds from being able to buy up single family homes across the country, you know how popular that would be? As it 
turns out Americans don't like for private equity goons to come and hoover up all the single family homes so that Americans can't buy them. There is a bill right now that would put a stop to that. But have you heard Biden come out and say anything in support of that? No, of course you haven't. There are tangible steps that Biden's administration could take right now in order to gain more popularity in order to see those poll numbers go up. He is just unwilling to do that. He and his entire administration is just unwilling to do the things that are necessary in order to gain support. And Abdullah Hamoud is right when he says it is the candidate's job to present an affirmative vision for the voter. I don't know why Democrats just think that like saying or else is an effective strategy. But no, they don't wanna do that. They don't wanna do that. They just wanna say, we have zero affirmative vision for you. What is Biden running on? Let's ask that. What is Biden actually running on? Is there an affirmative vision? No. Is there campaign promises? No, what has he promised? Literally nothing. His entire campaign that he's running is, but Trump. American democracy. But do you care about American democracy though, do you? Because first of all, if they really cared about American democracy, they wouldn't be running Biden. He's like a million years old. He's deeply unpopular. They'd be running someone else if they actually cared about American democracy. But there is no affirmative vision. He's not making any promise. He's not promising this time to pass civil rights legislation to protect voting rights. He's not promising codify Roe v. Wade. He's not promising to do a $15 minimum wage, which he promised before, but then he reneged on. He's not promising to do anything on healthcare. Remember when he said he was gonna do a public option when he got in 2020 and then it just totally like never brought up again, never to be heard from again. We got millions of people in this country living with long fucking COVID and they haven't talked about healthcare at all. So not only is he making zero campaign promises to any of his constituents, could be doing things right now to stop the genocide in Gaza, and he is doing none of it. He won't even meet with Arab American leaders. He's literally just sending out his fucking campaign staff. Do you think any of these people want Trump to win? No, none of us do. I don't want Trump to win. I'm not one of these people on the left that you see that are like just nihilists that are like, yeah, you know, whatever. It's fine if Trump wins. It's all the same. It's all. No, I'm not one of those people. I understand the threat, the very real threat that Trump and his fascist administration pose. So the question is, why doesn't Biden? Why doesn't the Biden administration understand the threat that he poses? Because you can talk about Trump all you want. But we've got the Israeli version of Trump sitting over in the Knesset right now doing everything that Trump would want him to do. And Biden is doing nothing but empowering the right-wing government over there. So as he correctly said, if you're worried about this, which he is and which I am, it is time to reevaluate your failing campaign and ask yourself, why is it that you are losing so much support among all these different demographics and what can you do? What can your campaign do to gain the support and the trust and the votes of these people? You have nine months to get your fucking shit together. And I suggest that you use some of that fucking energy that you're using to send out your campaign lackey to threaten people and just tell them that they need to vote for Biden because hashtag Trump to go and convene somewhere and start plotting what you're going to do to gain back those votes. Because as of right now, you're going to fucking lose and you're gonna deserve it.